happiness isn't doesn't come from money. You don't have to start a business to be socially accepted as being successful. Success is whatever it is to you. That might be living in the same town that you grew up, finding a nice partner, having some kids and just like that's it, you're happy and going to the pub every Saturday with your mates, whatever, that, that, that's happy. That's fine. Don't feel that you need to conform to this world that some of these guys and girls are spouting on about because you don't have to be an entrepreneur. You can be perfectly happy being whatever it is that, you know, you, you're enjoying in your job. So, yeah, so no, we we launched this, um, we launched this bit of this business uh, and there's a company that we were familiar with that we'd done a little bit of work with previously before and I just contacted them and said, look, you know, we need to get some video material out there and they, they do do a few podcasts um, uh, and they do a, a, a YouTube series called the Contrepreneur Series, which I would like just check it out. It is really good. But they're a great bunch of guys as well. It's like really down to earth, very different. And so we just ha- I thought to myself, right, the next series of my podcast, I need somebody that is knows what they're doing in terms of production and they've got all the right equipment because the first series that I'd done, I just kind of threw it together myself really. But I realised that I needed to get access to good quality yeah, uh, people and equipment so that the types of guests that I was trying to get on, I could get access to them. They'd, and that's, They'd like respect what you were doing a bit more, I suppose. Well, yeah, it? because the other thing is, is that the... The guests that I'd had on were all fantastic, all delivered high, what I felt was high value, and I'd, I, and I'd had great feedback, so that was good. But for me, I also wanted to take it to the next level, and I wanted to get access to uh, certain book authors that had written books that I could then connect them with an audience that w- w- wasn't necessarily reading their books. My podcast is, is targeted and named at quite a niche group of C-suite executives and people that are going through digital transformation and they need, you know, access to certain bits of information. Yeah. And I wanted to connect that and be that conduit to bring it together to help people. That's what the podcast was about. But to be able to get those levels of people, sometimes you're having to go through PR agencies, you're having to talk to different people and they judge a book by its cover. 100%. So they, they, they rightly or wrongly, but of course they're representing a brand, they're representing a person who, you know, they want to make sure they're, if they're in high demand, why should they choose my podcast over somebody else's? So I thought, you know what, I've got to take this up a level. And so that's why I did it. I, I think you've definitely got it. This game, like especially, is so expansive now. I know, you know, when I ask people or people have come in, usually they've been asked to go on a dozen podcasts. That mm. tends to be the way it goes. They're getting requests weekly because there's literally, I can't remember if there's something like 2 million podcasts in the world or something now. And, you know, if you've got like a decent following or whatever, you, you divide them people between the people in the world and then the people in the world who actually watch. Yeah. You know, because I feel like most people who've watched podcasts, after a while, something twigs in their head and they think, right, I could do this. Because it is just talking at the end of the day. And I think everyone has got some sort of story to talk about or has the capability of having a conversation with someone about theirs. Yeah. Yeah. So I can see, you know, it's an attractive thing to do in it, but you've got to do something to like stand out. Definitely. But this, it's such a good way of communicating. So I listen to podcasts, but I also listen to a lot of audio books. So audio is just a great way of consuming content because you can do it on the go. So I drove here two hours. I've listened to half an audio book on the way here. Yeah. I'll finish that by the time I get back this evening for dinner. So it's great. The other side of it is is that sometimes you want to watch the interview so you get the best of both worlds. And I think that that creation of the visual content, the video side of it, helps so much with marketing, the, yeah. whether it's a brand, the podcast, whatever it is. So it makes such a difference. It really does. I think so as well because I've never personally gone on to like um, Spotify or iTunes to look for my next podcast I'm going to start watching. I always yeah. find them either on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and you see something that, like you said, is eye-catching for you, and you go, oh, God, that looks pro. Mm. And then that's what drags you in. And then once you've like built a sort of relationship with a person who's the other side of the desk or whatever, you're listening to them interview people, then you go, right, I'm going to... Uh, I don't mind listening to them on Spotify now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah, a yeah. transition, yeah. isn't it, I find? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, you know, I... I and by no means a podcast expert or anything like that. But I do find that 
this new way of kind of driving sort of car. I mean, I guess it's not really new. It's been around a while, but it's a big, I think it's important. I think it's important that, you know, businesses large and small take advantage of this type of medium to connect and build an audience because it's, the world's changed. Definitely. I, I was just wondering as well, I, I might be wrong here, but is it Josh Gudgeon? Is, is he the one who did, did the work with um, the contrepreneur? I can't remember. I'm sure he had something to do with it. Um, I, I, I know the name. I follow him on Twitter. And I think, think media or something. I think I think they are. I don't know if they're connected in some way, but I think they may know one of them. I, I know the chap you mean, yeah, because yeah. I, I, I follow him on Twitter. Yeah, he puts out a lot of good stuff. And I think yeah. I'm sure he works with him because he works with like Beards, Meat, Foods and... Have you right. ever seen that guy? No. He's basically like um, a food reviewer, sort of food challenge eater. So you like, you'll have some yeah. ridiculous like ten breakfasts. And <laughs> but yeah, oh, wow. he's got like a high, <laughs> really high quality YouTube channel, and um, it's mad, really, how many people are interested in watching that sort of thing. Yeah. Just watching this guy trying to demolish this uh, wow massive, massive wow. plate of food is well. I, I I only came across the Iron Production through, through through LinkedIn. You know, I mean that is probably you know quite the a prominent social platform for me, especially for work. Yeah. Um, you know, so yeah. But yeah, there you so, go. There's just to put a bit of context to it, Chris has come in to uh have a chat first come across you on TikTok. I seen your video. Um basically just shining a bit of light on the fact like someone give you a negative comment. Yeah. Um and I found it really powerful the fact that you, you addressed it and and kind of just shined a light on the fact that the damage it could do sort of making them comments against someone really yeah and um so this would be a good point in your podcast to take that and then just like show it yeah 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 i, I will i'll put i'll so put to it give in. it that context sort of yeah people definitely because I, I don't think i could do it this can i don't mean this in a big edit. i don't think i could do it justice not from what, what i said but actually trying to put people in that moment of you know what was a reckless throwaway comment to the person that made the comment but actually the impact that that potentially could have had yeah, definitely. I'll stick it in you just so you can all have the context and I'll, um, yeah, I'll screen record it, stick it in. And I think, you know, from this point forward now, they're going to hear us talking about it so yeah. they, and, and they'll know what's going on. But yeah, I think definitely like so, someone saying something like that, it was obviously very hurtful, I would imagine. I don't know how, how you take it now. I, I didn't find it hurtful, uh, truth be told. But I think that's because I've got a certain level of resilience that others might not. Yeah. And part of the message that I was trying to give, not just to that person, because, and for anybody listening or watching this, you know, don't go and seek that person out. You know, it's, the matter's been dealt with. It's, you know, that's it, it's done. Um, but I didn't say those things back to them for, you know, for me, as I said in that video, really, it was it was more about, you know, this can hurt. This can this can be damaging to others. So it do, it didn't it doesn't impact me because I built up that level of resilience. But I'm very fortunate in that regard. And there's many others out there who are not. And we live in a world where which is so fake and false. You know where everything is on demand, and especially the youth of today, you know are ex, are exposed to this false Instagram instant gratification world, whereby you know. They believe that they've got to look a certain way, they feel a certain way, wear a certain set of bra- whatever it is, and that's just not real. And as throwaway as that comment may have been to that individual, that could have they may do that on a regular basis, and that could have quite significant, long lasting, and damaging effects to people. So I'm very fortunate in a sense that I, it doesn't bother me. Uh, it, it has done historically. Uh, but not for a long, long time. And I think there's many people out there that that, that it would, um, not just if somebody's got a birthmark, but somebody that, you know, maybe a little bit overweight or feel that they don't look the, the way that yeah. they should do, whatever it might be. And there's a fine line because I also take a bit of stick from saying something like that from people sort of saying, but it's just a joke, just because you're offended by it. You know, get over it. Do you know what? I get that. I do yeah. get it. And, it, and and it's a very, very fine line, I think, because being candid and blunt, I'm not the wokey, sort of easily offended type. And just because you get offended by something doesn't necessarily mean to say that it, it's wrong. But let's kind of just bring it right into reality and very specifically to if you're picking and making fun of someone's appearance, 
in a way that like that was, that isn't all right. And I think that anybody with the right mind or in their right mind would know that, look, that's a step too far. I totally agree with you, mate. I think it's, it is definitely a step too far. And it might be a totally different thing if you're around your group of mates and you're having a laugh and, you know, you're taking a piss out of something about them and they're taking a piss out of something about yeah. you and you're with good-hearted people you know there's no meaning or malice, malice behind yeah. it. Yeah, It's a totally different thing. But when it's coming from someone random on the internet who you don't know and the comment is hurtful, yeah. uh, maybe you're not feeling that so much. But I think as well, I don't know how you feel about it, but if anyone ever says anything negative about me and I don't really know them, I try to take the approach of there must be something pretty bad going on in their life to even feel the need to speak like that towards me because I don't go around making them comments to people mm. because I don't feel like that does anything for me. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah. I don't know what you think, but do you think like, w- w- do you ever try to put yourself in their shoes? Always. I think, but that's perspective in it. That's, that's being able, well, and, and that's, that's human. It's good human nature to have a level of of trying to sympathize and empathize with people. You know, that individual might have had a bad day. I don't know what sort of life they have. And like you quite rightly said, you know, what's going on in their world to make them want to do something like that? And so I do get that and I do agree with you. On the flip side and conversely though, you know, there's a level of responsibility. And I don't think that we can always sit behind this. And I'm not suggesting that you, you were yeah, saying Yeah, I'm this. not justifying it in and, any and, way. And, yeah. and, and, I know, and I know that you're not. Um, but again, for context, it, you know, you have to look at things in balance and in perspective. And for me, irrelevant of how old people are, if they've got access to a smart device and they are on a platform, whether it's TikTok or whatever else, and they're making those sorts of comments and poking fun at people, trolls effectively. Yeah. They may have some bad shit going on in their life, and that's not great, and fair enough. But equally, they have got a level of responsibility, and that level of responsibility is something that they should own, and it's not down to me, you, or anybody else out there to kind of show them that it's sort of, you know, you've got to, you just got to understand that you can't blame everybody else for your, you being a dick. Yeah. How, how are you going to move forward with that attitude? You're well, exactly. Not, you, you, you know, gonna... if, if it's if it's up to everybody else, if it's up to everybody else for how you behave, like, come on. Yeah, well, I really hope that, although, like you said, you don't want people to go after them totally, I, I don't think that's probably going to help. But I really hope they've seen your reply video. I don't know if you've had contact with the person since or... <clears throat> no, what's quite interesting is is that they didn't, they didn't reply to me, but I know that there was thousands upon thousands. I mean, that, like, I, th- I had over like 4.3 million views of that video. And I noticed that there was a lot of people that made comments and then he or she replied to them, but never directly replied to me. But that says it all. Because if that person would have come back and said, whatever, we could have had a debate. Yeah. So... I, that was, I have another TikTok account. I'll tell you the story. So I went onto TikTok as I think most 40 somethings did in the height of the first lockdown and just dicking around essentially having a bit of fun. (laughs) Yeah, you you name it. So, (laughs) but what happened was is that, um, Built, built up a few followers and you can obviously you can go live on it. So I went live while sharing a flying experience. So I like flying and people started asking me lots of questions about flying, about work, about business. And so I thought, oh, do you know what? I'm, I, I, one of my goals last year was to start to give back uh, to society in some way. And, you know, I'm nothing special, but I think that I've got experiences and life experiences that might actually help other people. Um, and I thought, you know what, why not use this platform to do that? So I decided to go live every week and start to share experiences. And so that's, that's what I was doing. And earlier this year, I think it was about March on one of the lives, uh, on TikTok, uh, I, I always get trolls on there, always get trolls on there, but it doesn't bother me. And I say to the people that are listening in, look, don't, whatever the comments are being said, just ignore the negative stuff because the, the value is in 
is in the, the audio from me and the visual. You know, it's what I'm talking, that's where the value is, yeah. so ignore this. And I think on one particular session, the trolls must have got so angry that they decided to, like, mass complain. So TikTok permanently banned this account, which had, like, I don't know, 50,000 followers on it or something. So I wrote to them and said, look, you know, there's obviously some sort of mistake here because I've not violated community guidelines. Got the usual automated response. Yes, you have, you know, go home and don't come back. So I thought, hmm. So I set up another account. So I kind of lost that one and set up a new one. Anyway, the moral of the story is, is that TikTok then wrote to me and said, oh, yeah, we put it back live again now. And so I'd then got a negative comment on the on the new on, on this new one and responded to it with four point odd million views. <laughs> but you'll note in the video I say I, I use the phrase, I'm gonna say to you what I said to the last idiot. Well I I had a something similar happen on this other account and that equally attracted millions of views. Now the individual on that particular one and, and that those two the both accounts are live. I've asked TikTok to merge them together but to no avail as of yet. But on that last one, that individual, he, I think it was he, he did respond to me directly. Oh, did he? Yeah. And he also commented on that other one. Now, what was quite interesting was, was his take on things. So he, in, in, the, in, in the negative comment that he'd made, he was, uh, he said something like, oh, you, you've been stung by a bee or a wasp or something, I don't know. And I, I ignored it initially, but then somebody had said, look, that's that's not all right saying that. And he was like, oh, yeah, it is. It's fine. It's whatever. And then that's when I replied. And, of course, they deleted what they'd said and claimed it was just a joke. And through he got a lot of negative feedback, but just kept saying it was a joke. And that, for me, was, well, you've clearly not learned from this because you know that it wasn't just you don't even need to hold your hands up to anybody, just it just internally to yourself. But that's the responsibility piece. Then fast forward a few months to this other video. He's then commenting in the thread saying, yeah, I made him famous on his other account. And you think, <laughs> oh <laughs> my God. Like, what the fuck goes through these people's minds? Like, I, I don't get it. And so, so you know, the, I, I know there's a lot in, of info there, but it's to try and build that picture of, do you know what? Some people don't engage with it. Like that individual didn't, never did. But this one over here on the other account did. But just just denial. Put his flag in the ground and said, I'm not moving even if I'm wrong, basically, isn't it? But it's just denial. It's yeah. just denial. Now, they can say whatever they want. Oh, it was a joke. We both know that it wasn't because you'd sold somebody that it wasn't and the reason why you'd said it. And then when you realised that this thing was blowing up because I'd responded to it, you quickly went and deleted it all so that there was no evidence of it. Yeah. That's that's basically admitting liability yeah. in, in a way, so, isn't it? So, if you know, you, if you've got to take it down, you've obviously, yeah, but, you feel like... And so, you know, it, I, I, it's a shame, but I think the important thing is to focus on the people that this does affect. And that's, that's like my invitation to people out there who do this sort of stuff. It's like, have a laugh and a joke. No problem. But there's, there's a line, and just remember that there's a human being on the other end of this stuff. And like I said at the outset, you know, we can't live in this oversensitized world where people can't offend one another. You know, we, we, nobody should go out there to try to. But, you know, I, I, and, I'm, and I'm not an advocate for that. I'm just saying that there's a, we, there's a, there is a fine line, and we kind of know that line, so just be careful with it and be kind. Yeah, I know. And, and like you said, it's, it's easy... It is easy to get offended and, and mm. to take things to heart. But, yeah, if you're the person dishing it out, then maybe, yeah, just like you said, take responsibility and think you don't know if they've already that day been feeling like they want to fucking end it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And you may be the final thing. And are you going to be able to live with yourself if you're that person as well? It? you just got to... Yeah, if you're, if you're the catalyst t towards the end. And you'd, and you'd never know. And and that that is the in the most extremes of cases, it is, of course. Yeah. However... We live in a world now where suicide, where mental health is a major, major issue because of these sorts of platforms. And so I think that we all have a collective responsibility that if you've got a bit of confidence, if you do, if you are a bit different, is just, you know, have a backbone and kind of stand up 
uh, when something and call and call out bad stuff, you know, because yeah. if we're all just going to turn a blind eye to it, you know, that's it's not how I was brought up. Yeah, well, well, maybe you know, them people they may stand on their perch of what they said to yeah. you, but they may never do it again because of the amount of. <laughs> I'm sure they had tons of grief in the comments on it because I seen it and you know instantly you're like bloody hell, like yeah. you know, respect to you for for speaking out about it. And uh, there was literally, like you said, thousands of comments, weren't there, in that, mm. in that one post? And I think, yeah, it's like, you know, that's bound to they're bound to look at that and go, Christ, I, I made a, I made a huge mistake here, probably it's somewhere inside their head. Yeah, yeah. But then at the same time, there's people you who never, don't as well, mind. Know. Yeah, you never, you never know. You never know. They usually uh, got a fake account anyway, and they don't show yeah. anything of themselves on these accounts. So, no, no. But it is a crazy world we're living in at the minute with uh, all the social media and everything. And I think like. You know, I've had times where you're on it and you think I'm wasting too much of my time here and whether you like to think it doesn't, I feel like you can't help sometimes but look at things on there and it does change your perspective, uh, your perspective on stuff and and also get that little bit of like, I wish for this and it does take you away from necessarily the person who you are and it does influence you, that's what it's about, that's why there's influencers and yeah. So sometimes you have got to take yourself away from the situation, haven't you? And balance. Yeah. Like, to me, everything is about balance. You know, um, a friend of mine recommended a book to me some years ago now uh, by a guy called Ray Dalio. It was called Principles. Now, in that book, he talks about the pendulum effect, about how society effectively moves from one extreme to the next. Uh, now, if you don't know who he is, he is the founder of Bridgewater Associates. If you ever watch the TV show Billions, allegedly, the, the Sky Atlantic TV show, allegedly that is based roughly around, the, the, the character in, in that is based roughly around him. Right. Uh, to a certain extent, I believe. Now, he, you know, they're, they're obviously stock markets, all that kind of stuff. So, so the book is really about kind of... Um, the, the principles, not just of life, but in terms of, you know, in, investing and, and getting returns on those investments. And he talks about the pendulum effect, moving from one extreme to the next, swinging, governments are the same, you're either, you know, it's either a left-wing government in or it's a right-wing government in. But actually, what you've got to understand is, is what happens in the middle. Because if you understand what happens in the middle, where the balance is, not only is life a lot better, it's not a finance a lot better, but the, the, the world is just a better place. And, it, and And I just think that's such a great, kind of I, that, that that's probably the biggest thing i took from that book yeah and i ca i've carried that in my you know parts of my career in these latter years because it's like actually do you know what it is about balance you know in in my world i work in i work with organizations that are going through major transformations and it's you know culture and people are a major part of trying to make that happen and so but they're moving from one extreme to the next we're going to move from this way of working to this way of working hang on that's just you know it's about about getting it in the middle yeah, some like I I see what you're saying about going in the middle. It's kind of like I find, you know, yeah, you're either working too hard, and then you may be doing like sixty hours a week. Yeah, but you only get in like thirty hours of productivity in. Aren't you? Precisely, and, and 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 to the point about how much social media do you consume? Well, it's about the balance, isn't it? The, the, no one's saying turn it off. Don't ever go on it. But you know, because you, you you're gonna. I mean, you could just turn it off, but. You know, there's nothing wrong with learning on there. You know, we wouldn't be sat here now if it wasn't for TikTok. If it wasn't for a social media platform, you and I wouldn't have be having this conversation. 100%, mate. And I think that's a positive thing. So there are good things, this, but it's about balance, isn't it? You know, how much of this stuff should I have? It's like, you know, it's like a beer. <laughs> you know, balance, you know, if you're, out, if you're going to have 10 a day, there's going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, you're right. It's, it is the same as anything. You, even down to the fact of if you exercise too much, yeah. you're gonna start causing yourself a problem. I mean, like, but, but it's, 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 it's an, it becomes a compulsive obsession, doesn't it? And yeah. that, that's not good. You know, if if that's what some people need, then you know, so be it. But yeah. for me, balance is all about yeah. balance. It's like finding that flow state in it where everything is just matching up, and you just yeah. seem to be flowing through. And so, so have you ever been through a time where you've obviously like because you. You're a businessman yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you've got you've got a business. Uh, I, I had a little look through your website and stuff, but obviously, you, I would imagine in times you've probably hit that time where you've over overstepped the mark with working too much. And 
how, how do you find absolutely. your balance? Absolutely. Um, well, I, I've been that pendulum. I've been uh, typically <laughs> not on the... I've never had a poor work ethic and been... We, we're all a bit lazy at times, but mine was completely at the other end of the direction. Um, at two stages in my life, in, in, in my career, the first was in 2005, where I was actually, I was an employed uh, CEO and uh, whilst I owned part of that company through uh, an MBO, I, I wasn't, I was I was at a time of life where I called myself an entrepreneur more than an entrepreneur. And in 2005, I literally like hit a wall because I was working that hard. I had a lot going on in my private life, um, you know, weddings coming up, all sorts of stuff. And literally one day, I just had a panic attack. I didn't know what it was, but I had a panic attack. And I and it, and it messed me up. It properly messed me up. And I remember thinking, like, and it frightened the living daylights out of me. But that was the point I realised, like, I'm, I'm hitting burnout here. And it took me a couple of years to get through that. Still, whilst maintaining that. And in fact, the people that I worked with never knew. Yeah. They, they, do, they wouldn't have known a thing. But that it took, like, real hard work and effort. And I... I got a lot of resilience from that, but I went too far with it because then when I came out of that and then went off on my own properly and launched a business, I went totally the other side where I continued to be really sort of, you know, constantly working all the time, not at home. And, you know, that that, that wasn't good. And so, again, it brings it back to balance. I've, I've, I've been, I've suffered with the, panicky stuff and then got through that and realized actually yeah I know how to sort of manage that now and I know what the signs are for burnout so I'll go on a holiday but rather than try and find that balance what all I did was is that I knew where I knew where the line was in the sand so I'd go to to the edge of it and then just recharge and then go to the edge of it and that's not healthy either it's not healthy for you it's not healthy for your personal relationships and the reality is it's not actually healthy for the business because I, I have a big issue with so, especially on TikTok, some of these other platforms, there's so many fucking gurus out there. And they're very successful, but some of them, in fact, most of them are, in terms of kind of what success is to them. I've got loads of money in the bank. I've got all this flashy stuff. Like, follow me. Yeah. Actually, much of it is about self attention because there's something missing in my view for them. But the other thing is, is they've got rabbiting on about like, grinding people into the ground and working 150 hour week well, just nut stuff you know, it, do, it doesn't work yes from time to time you've got to put in a shift when you're running a business sometimes that might be for a year you're working mad hours and stuff like that but trust me in the process of doing that whether you're male or female if you've got any form of home life you're damaging it irreversibly damaging it and so don't do it that's my and, and 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 one of the things I've tried to do on TikTok is try to bring some perspective to people. And you know, I like the likes of Gary Vee. I enjoy watching some of his stuff, but I also disagree with some of the rhetoric that comes out from from that guy. You know, that huge work ethic that makes him happy, great. But don't be saying to 19, 17, 18, 19 year olds, like, I'll, you know, hustle, yeah, fine, but don't be advocating working eighteen hour days and nineteen hour days. Because that's like bad for their health. Like that's bad for them. That's not. That's not yeah. good. They're not good habits. Like, why don't we start advocating? Do you know what? You don't need to be an entrepreneur to be happy in life. No, mate. I think you're right. And there is a lot of pressure on that as well. And then, yeah. Well, it's because it's this world of like. Do you know what? If you want to be, if you want to be accepted, you need to drive around in this car, wear that watch, and you need to be this big, huge, you know, great businessman or woman. It's bollocks. No, you don't. You can be dead happy, financially free working a nine to five and earning reasonably well, you just got to be smart with your money and you just need to be smart with, and, and you can be dead happy. You don't need, you know, r running a business isn't easy. It's like, but for some of us, who are, you know, a bit yeah. on, the, on the other side, that's kind of what turns us on. Yeah. That's kind of what gets us out of bed in the morning and being involved in that cut and thrust. But for others, it's not. And so I've been at that pace of burnout. I've made mistakes with it. I've screwed up relationships with it, but I've also come to realize through experience, actually, there's a better way of doing this. And that better way is being smart, recognizing the burnout stage, but not letting yourself get there. Because actually, if you have this balance, and I'll keep using the word, but that's what it's all about. You run a hell of a lot quicker. 
you get there in a much, much happier place. And the people that you take on that journey with you are much happier as well. And it's just a much, much better place. And I've learned that through tra- through error more than anything. And I just think if there's one, th- not just one, th- if there's some things that I would like to kind of leave in my own legacy with people it is that you don't need to do this burnout thing, guys. You really don't. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good message for people. And I think, so do you mind putting like that, not down for us to, to know what that looks like for you, like them sort of hours? I know it's yeah. probably changes and it's fluid. Yeah. But do you try to cap it at a certain point? Yeah, definitely. I do. I never used to, but I do now. Um, so in my, my last venture went royally tits up. And uh, what I realized when I came out the back of it was I'd worked, like I, I was pushing it too, too much the other way. Um, and I, and that's, you know, as I said at the start, you need that uh, relentlessness to do those sort of things from time to time. So when I kind of went into the next thing, and, and there's a few other things that, that are ongoing now, one of the important parts of me was having a set hours and a routine that was built around the important things. You know, work was important to me, so it was important that I did it. But my hobby is important to me. I love flying, so make time for it. My kids are important to me. Make time for them. You know, my kids would happy to say, Dad's on his phone. When I'm with my kids, you know, I need to be with them, invested in them, not like on the phone doing a deal or whatever. I need to be invested in them. And so I started to kind of break that out. But I also realized when I started to reflect and look back, some of the most successful moments of my business life I was never in the office and I was never in the country and my best ideas I was always overseas I was on holiday I was somewhere where my head wasn't in the day-to-day and I thought you know what like that's what I need to be so my work now is that as, as, a, as a management consultant and you, you're working with organizations who are going through major change and you're advising them on things you know, they're trusting you because you've got the expertise and experience to do this stuff. So I'd never take on work whereby my diary is nine to five back to back meetings. Like companies that allow that to happen are just burning their staff out and they're losing so much opportunity because people aren't, can't come up for air. And so for me, it's about saying, right, if from a, from, uh, in the nine to five world, make sure that things are planned out. You're not back to back. Because I can't perform as a consultant if I'm, and I and, and the people that I work with won't perform and be thinking and strategically in the right place if if they're burnt out. They're, they're, you know you've got to you got to have that time and you can create it. And then for your private life, it's exactly the same. So for me, it's very simple. I just do it like that day to day. Every year, I have like these are the things that I want to achieve this year, and it's broken down into quarters. But it's not just work things; it's private life stuff. You know, it's holidays. It's it's, you know, time with, it's experiences, it's things that are important, not just for me, but for, like, my partner, for, like, my kids, for, for, it's for all of us. It's like, well, what, you know, what are the things that are important to us? What do we want to make happen this year? Life resume, like, sort of yeah. thing, isn't it? And, and, so, and, and I do that, like, religiously, every year, October, November time, I go away for, like, three days, and we, I'm setting out, well, what do I want to do next year? What do I want to become? What, what are we going to make happen? reverse engineer it all and then it's broken down into and so every day I go in in the morning and I'm looking at it on a whiteboard and it's not just well what have I got to achieve for this client or what have I got to achieve with the app business over here or the stuff that we're doing on the health side or Nova strategy and consulting it's 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 like well what am I doing to make sure I've got my instrument rating by the end what am I doing to make sure Zach Alfie and Louie are going to are going to be happy with their things that all that stuff is important. And the only way to do that is to be conscious of it and be consistently looking at it. And that can only mean breaking your time up between work, home and hobby. Yeah. I think that's really important because I think, yeah, you can, you can get obsessed with the grind you're in. And I think a lot of the time that's like ego driven because you don't want to be seen to be failing or not have the watch or the car or the whatever, which isn't, really important like you know if you're sacrificing your happiness to drive a bit nicer of a car which only essentially gets you from a to b like there's something wrong there isn't there there's something crucially wrong there there is and do you know what like i've been there i've been there 
that, so I, you know I, I know what that's like to to have that and then get it and think yes and there's nothing wrong with having material for, like I have material things that are nice and I don't feel guilty for having them but equally I wouldn't do it to please somebody else I did I did it for me like I, I wanted that and if I, I wouldn't do it recklessly but there's so many people out there, as I say, we said earlier about the whole social media thing, they're focused on this. Well, that's what I need to make me happy. And it's not like yeah. happiness isn't, you know, happiness won't come from a check. Happiness won't come from, you know, a bank balance increasing by several zeros on the end of whatever's in there at the moment in the positive. It won't. It just gives you access to do different things. And if anything, it brings more it can bring more stress to you because you then want to maintain that. And it's kind of like, well, you know, happiness isn't anything that's material. Happiness is a, is, is it's, it's about being, you know, comfortable with life. And yeah. I, when we spoke on the phone the other day, I was saying that I had my day job. I was running like a business on the side. I was working, you know, the sort of 40 hour week in work and then 20 on the side. And I had the most money I ever had in my life, but I was mm. the, the least happy and it just doesn't correlate. It doesn't always correlate, does it? You've no. got to, uh, like you say, it's all. It is all about that balance. And I think we've got to try and like actively seek a way to try and strike that balance as well, haven't we? And yeah, and and I think I think it's important that these influencers, you know, I'd, I'd, you know, all these people that are out there posting videos about how to become, you know, feasibly happy, become a millionaire. It's like if you've got that much dough, why don't you just invest it in kind of showing people that that actually the money isn't what made you happy. Because it isn't, is it really? No. It's, 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 and and in, the truth is, is, you're probably not happy. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing this nonsense and trying to charge people for it, would you? Yeah. <laughs> Did you? Because obviously, there's a lot of people say doing the coaching side of things, aren't yeah. they? Online, like, and would, yeah. do you do you think there's like a lot of fraud in that, or is there a lot? Of- I think there's undoubtedly a lot of fraud fraud in it. But I also think that there there are some good people out there. You know, I had a mentor uh, who who would be potentially classed as one of those people that you know goes out there coaches, but you know, he has been there, done it, and he is wearing the T-shirt. And, you know, uh, I, you know. so I think there are there is good stuff. You know, I've paid a lot of money over the years, like obscene amounts of money, to attend events where I've wanted to be motivated. I've not been looking for some secret source to become loaded overnight, but to help my business of that of those times scale and grow. And I used to fly to America and, 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 and go to events and it's important, you know, you've got to do this stuff, uh, but I'd be careful with, and I'd be selective about what I consumed and who I hung around with at the, cause you, you meet all sorts, but they are important things to, to attend, but there is most definitely a bunch of dodgy folk out there. Yeah. Um, now I was about to say, not everybody that sells a course is dodgy. You know, some of them are doing it because, you know, well, they're seeing it as a revenue stream uh, and fair enough. Uh, but on the flip side, I'm not saying that it, for them to be real, they've got to offer it for free. I'm just inviting those people, not that they necessarily watch this, but if they ever did and they're in that kind of world, is that just be careful about what you're saying and think about who you're influencing and what, you know, because happiness isn't doesn't come from money. You don't have to start a business to be socially accepted as being successful success is whatever it is to you that might be living in the same town that you grew up finding a nice partner having some kids and just like that's it you're happy and going to the pub every saturday with your mates whatever that's happy that's fine don't feel that you need to conform to this world that some of these guys and girls are spouting on about because you don't have to be an entrepreneur you can be perfectly happy being whatever it is that you know you're enjoying in your job yeah, definitely. And I think it doesn't even exist for half of them either. <laughs> you know well, no, but it's like I see it with, you know, I, I, I see it with, with, with people. Like I, I, since doing TikTok, I've had some really, really interesting conversations privately with people who've reached out to me who are young, you know, uh, they've finished school typically. And there's, there's a number of them that university graduates or going to university or in university, and they're literally just in this void. And they and they they've contacted me and said, "I just want some advice, want some help." And some of the questions very much are around what what are the top three things that I could do to make myself like really successful. 
and I'm I can be quite blunt and like candid and colourful language and stuff. And I'd be like, well, what the fuck does that mean? What you, well, what's success to you? What does success look like? And most of them can't answer it because they don't know. And I'm like, look, I think you're searching for the wrong thing. Don't. Yeah. The beauty of life is discovery. Go and enjoy the journey. And as cliche as that might sound, don't be worrying. If you don't know what it is that you want to do, then my best advice to you is, is that if you want to go to university and you're going to enjoy it and you're going to get something out of that time there, whatever that degree is, then go and do it because it's just three years of your life. Now, but if you've got this great business idea, then equally go and do that. You know, if, if you're uncertain about which one to do, just make a decision because you can always quit. Yeah, you've got time to try you got, you got to try, the other one you got as to well. Try, exactly. You? And, and again, it's just society just feeding you this. You need to have this plan and all this other stuff. And I find that, I found that really interesting. Conversely, then I spoke to other people who sort of had, you know, wanted to, they were considering leaving university or they wanted to try and find a job. There's one chap in particular and he came and he's like, you know, I've kind of got this night job, I've kind of finished uni and I kind of want to get into consulting and I was really struggling. I can't, can't get a job. What should I do? So I said, well, what are you doing to find a job? So he told me what he was doing, what everybody else does. You know, send CVs out, 10 a day or whatever to job boards. I said, you're in the wrong game, mate. So you don't be doing that. Get on LinkedIn. Start, find the people that you want to work for, companies. Find the hiring managers, connect with them, send them a little video or send them a one-liner and change that CV so it looks completely different. He messaged me two weeks ago. And this was only in the last sort of eight weeks. He's moving to Cambridge to his dream job because he got off his arse and he did something about it. Now, that wasn't down to me. Absolutely wasn't down to He'd put all the effort in. But the point is, is that he did it differently. And there's somebody in society who just needed a bit of guidance and all these gurus that are out there, just give him that. Yeah. Because he doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't need to go and be the next Richard Branson or whoever else, you know, he... He just wants a decent job in a world where he's happy. And then for the flip side, for the other people who maybe are a little bit lost and trying to work it out, let's just, as a society, let them know that it's okay to go on the journey of discovery. Don't fret over it. Yeah, it's crazy as well, because at the minute we're in this world where you can literally, I think if you do something well enough and you can kind of, like this is the positives of like social media Mm -hmm. and you can get it on there, you can literally connect with like, someone who's maybe got a million followers and a massive business, if you do something well enough and connect with them, that can lead to a job or whatever. Like there was this crazy story. There was this like security guard, uh, I don't know what it was, like an equivalent to a Tesco in America. And um, this bloke tried stealing something and she like took him down, tackled him in the car park. And um, they were trying to get her to lose her job for it over assault. And then Dana White, who's like the president of the UFC. Yeah said, don't worry about your job. You're coming to work for me now and offered it like a really high paid security job. So it's like crazy and, you know, something like that can lead to something like that. It's so much like, and I know that's like an over-exaggerated. No, but it, but it, it tells the story, doesn't it? It makes yeah. the point of, you know. But the other thing is putting yourself out there. I, I, I made a video this morning actually because, and I put it I put it out uh, on Sunday yesterday and I had family down, great lamb dinner, a few bottles of red wine. I need to get in the gym on a Monday morning. I need to kind of keep myself fit, let myself go a little bit. So I've got this thing and I'm getting in there. This morning I really couldn't be asked. And I woke up and I was just like, oh, I don't really don't want to do this. <laughs> but I went. I pushed myself because I've built that up over the years to that mindset of, you know, if you're going to you just 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 go. So I went to the gym, walked in there, three people in there. And I just laughed to myself. I said to the lad, do you use on the floor? I said, it's like three people in there. Been sunny all weekend. Everyone's been in the beer gardens. Everyone did what I did last night and probably sunk a few too, sunk a few too many Pinot Noirs. You know, that's, that's like, we get it. But isn't it interesting how nobody's rocked up today? And I was there doing my workout. I really didn't want to, but I finished it off, went for a swim, got out, sat in the car, and I thought, I never feel bad when I come, when I finished in the gym. Never feel bad. But isn't it interesting how I, there's only a handful of us in there today? Yeah, it's because half of the sto- half of the challenges, turning up, just turn up, because if you want to be successful at anything, if it's getting that job, if it's meeting that guy or meeting that girl, whatever, you got to turn up. 
you got to show up to the game. And the game of life is constantly ongoing. So whatever it is, just show up. So I put a video out this month because I thought, you know what? Most people just don't show up. But I showed up today. Now, I didn't put the effort in that I might have done on last Thursday when I was on top of the world and not feeling a little bit worse aware because I had a couple too many red wines. But I was there. At least I went far more so than the rest of the people that didn't turn up today. And that goes comes all the way back to the same with people who are looking for jobs, who you want to be successful, whatever it is. Do you know what? Half of the job, turning up. You can't just sit at home and think that something's going to come to you. You've got to show up. Yeah, you've got to put yourself in the position, haven't you? A hundred percent. It's like with this. I'll be honest, right? There's been times where, like, before someone's turned up, I feel like I'm burnt out. I'm wrecked. And then I'm like, I just don't feel it today. Like, should I cancel? And then, then you get in there and you have an amazing conversation. You're like, yeah. that's why I didn't, I didn't call it quits. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. This is why I keep plugging away every week. I keep doing it, keep turning up to have these amazing conversations. And then you come out of there and you're like energized and you're like, oh, this is, this is what it's all about. And it's, it's the same with the gym. You only ever regret the times you don't, you don't go. Yeah. Like every time you go, you always leave there feeling better than when you turned up. Yeah, exactly. Whether it's a crap session compared to your last one or whatever, because like it just releases them endorphins. You're a different person coming out the door than you are going in. But it's no fact, isn't it? You know, it, may, it makes you feel better. And I think that it's just important. We said before about the whole balance thing again. It's the same, isn't it? You know, you, you've got to do you've got to do a bit of exercise to look after yourself. But equally, if you want a gin and tonic tonight, have one. Don't beat yourself yeah. up over it. You know, maybe not out of the bottle. But, you know. <laughs> Definitely, mate. Yeah, hundred percent. And yeah, I I find it hard in my life to strike the balance, and I find myself even now at times go, oh, oh yeah, that was a step too far. And I think <laughs> it is a constant maintenance as you go through. You don't just all of a sudden have it nailed on for the rest of your life. I think like and then circumstances change, and it's all adjustment all yeah. the time, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So so what's it? We'll go talk about your business a little bit, if you don't mind. What are you doing right now? So my day job, if you like, is I'm a management consultant. So I have a little consultancy outfit, which is me effectively working with financial services businesses typically and helping them on their digital transformation. Um, I have a background in technology. So I spent the first, well, I've been in tech for 20 years. Sort of my early career in the late nineties was with a dot com company and I grew with that and became the CEO of that business. And then I started my own agency, which was in mobile application development and management consultancy working with tech companies. And now I, I've got this, which is purely pure consultancy. Um and it's helping companies who are typically a, a stalwart in their industry. So like a bank, they'll have been around for donkey's years, but they are suffering with the pace of digital adoption and change they're being massively disrupted and they can't and they're struggling to sort of cope with that and there's several elements to it there's technology there's people and there's ways of the way that we develop technology so i'm effectively i get paid to go into companies and help them understand how do we go from being a blockbuster (laughs) to being a netflix you know and it's a, a complete different change so that's the kind of day job but i have a couple of other interests so i from my previous business there's an app company that's headquartered based over in Ireland. Um, so they develop apps um, typically for either um, fast-paced startups or uh, they're going through their growth phase. Uh, and they work with a few brands as well, but typically that, that that's the sort of you know market they'll sort of uh, focus on and target, and that's doing well. And then fairly recently, in the last few months, we we have developed and invested into a a digital health product, which is actually for, uh, it's targeted to 16 to 24 year olds for managing their sexual health. It's a major issue in the UK. In fact, it's not just in the UK. It's, it's a major issue everywhere, but it's a product that we're, that we've put taken to market to put into NHS to help kids get access to good, say kids, 16 to 24 year olds get access to good sexual health advice, contraception uh, and stuff like that. So we've got a, there's a few things it going on shall we juggling say. a few balls at the minute then, <laughs> well yeah. I, I mean I, I i i'm again going back to what i said earlier about balance and doing things properly from my past experiences i've known like don't overdo it so you know i focus heavily on my kind of nine to five that you know I, i'm that's my time in those companies and i'm i'm being paid to, to 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 work in there to do those things and that's what you know that's what my little consultancy does um but outside of that there are other things but other people run those but i'm sort of obviously invested in them 
both from an advisory capacity, but also to sort of do a bit because it's it's, it's been a world that I uh, you know I, I I've been in and I consult in it. You know these, yeah. so I kind of know how to kind of get a tech product from zero to doing something with it. So so with the disruption then in mm. in with what's going on, so we're like say a bank or whatever. Uh, obviously, like you were going into the world now where it's all like. I don't know if it's going to go this way or not, but Bitcoin and everything is like a massive thing. Yeah, crypto, um, yeah. digital currencies, yeah. etc. And like, in a way, we've kind of got one with the fact that you can just pay for things on your phone. You don't actually have physical cash the same yeah. as you used to. So, are you like working in them areas a bit, or is that? I'm not consulting in those areas. No, although it's an area of interest to me. It's an area that I've had interest in for a while in terms of the blockchain, which is obviously the, perhaps not obviously, but is the technology that underpins. The, the cryptocurrency because that the, the blockchain can be used in so many ways and i think that's going to be hugely disruptive it is you know we've seen already that financial institutions are starting to adopt uh they've they, they've been looking at this technology for a long time but in terms of creating currency and adopting their own currency you know think things are happening but it's a very volatile market as well oh yeah uh, especially when you've got elon musk sort of saying right well, i'm going to take bitcoin for a tesla and then all of a sudden actually i'm not anymore you know, there's somebody that can, you know. Well, yeah, it's just, it's like close to like criminal the way you can crash a market, isn't it, with it? Because um, I'm yeah. sure like he probably bought in, told everyone he's buying it, you know, you can buy a Tesla with this and probably sold it all and then, who knows? You know, who knows? Well, I'm I not, say who knows. It's a public company, so it's public. Yeah. You, if you look at it, it, it I'm sure it's, I haven't looked at it personally, but yeah. And that's the thing, but it's so volatile is the point. And for me, I think it's, you know, there's, Financial services are, are, are most definitely going to be taking advantage of the blockchain technology. They already are in lots of ways. Uh, and, and there's lots to be done potentially around cryptocurrency. But it's not an area that I advise in. It's not an area that I've deeply gone into. Yeah. Um, I mean, lots of people ask me about it, but in a very sort of loose way, really. Yeah. Yeah, because it is. Everyone's, I think as well, what people worry about is like, and um, but why people are so interested is because they've heard so and so down the road has made themselves a couple of thousand pound overnight. Yeah. Um, but then they also don't see that so and so down the road has also lost ten thousand pound the next yeah. day because, you know, I, I think it's probably about four or five years ago. Me and my brother were looking into it a bit and we were buying a bit and then it kind of crashed again. Then was it? I can't remember now. It was a few years back and I totally then disregarded it because I was upset and emotionally invested in it. Yeah. And then I was thinking, if I had what I had then now, <laughs> yeah. I'd be in a totally different situation. But it's, uh, yeah, I think definitely it's, it's like a future in it. And with the blockchain technology, they're looking to use that not not only in money as such, yeah. but in just data in general. And it? it's looking oh yeah, and, and I think that I think the advantage of it is, is it's going to cut out a lot of middlemen because it enables transactions to take place between two people securely, uh, which has been happening for a while, but just in a very different way. You know, I look at the conveyancing market around houses and, you know, I, I have got some some involvement in that through a client. And I know that that's, you know, on, on potential on the agenda there. You know, how's that going to work? And it's all, it is a big deal and it is certainly going to have an impact to make, you know. So you can, good. Go, so you can go on. How would that look though? So you'd have a block and you'd have all the details for what that property on a... Uh... Well, yeah, well, it had passed through the blockchain, you know, if you think about the conveyancing process and house purchases more, you know, and, and the people that are involved in that process, you've got the purchaser, you've got the seller, you've got a law firm, you've got a broker, you've got a lender. Searches. You search it. There's all these different people that are involved and it's a very complex process that could be simplified by data being passed about in the blockchain securely and you know there's and keys to undo it and all that there's 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 a lot that can be happening there uh, and it is starting to happen and i think it's going to be very positive and i get excited by that you know i love innovation i love the way that things can be disrupted you know i think it's a force for good you know how can we how do we improve things how do we make things better how do we give people better experiences how can we use a blockchain in healthcare how can we make you know, data accessible to understand what's going on for the good. You know, there's always going to be dodgy stuff out there and dodgy people. But what? How can we do this for the better? And having the confidence to kind of go out there and do that. Yeah, because I, because especially with the house thing, I find it crazy. Like when we were buying this place, you know, this day and age, it does seem crazy to me that you've got to wait two weeks for a search or you've got to wait six weeks to get yeah. it to go through. It's it nuts. just doesn't make any sense, does it? And like you said, if 
if you had this big database which you could extract the information from with the correct permissions, yeah, then it's, it's crazy it hasn't all happened yet, I suppose. But there's just so much out there, and um, well, it's regulation as well. Yeah, you know, these industries are highly regulated, and 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 it, it's about driving through that policy change, and that's not easy. You know, it takes time, um, but it's happening. Yeah, and like I, I could never see the future of all these different coins until like recently when you see that they're attaching themselves to a like specific utility for them. Yeah. And then by doing that, when that transaction happens for that particular utility, they'll make their, their wave in, in that particular spot, which is hard for me to explain because I'm not, you know, I'm not too knowledgeable on it, but I can kind of, when, when I watched a few things on it, I can kind of see why and how that's yeah. going to work, but it's quite hard to relay it forward. I don't know if you can uh, do do that any more justice. <laughs> probably, but... probably not to be honest <laughs> with you, because I, you know, I, I'm equally not the most. Uh, I, I'm, I'm probably not the best to to explain it. But yeah, in in, in a nutshell, yeah, yeah. So, right with, with, with your TikTok, then are you aiming to grow your TikTok? Like, what what's the goal with it for you? Um, it's a bit of. I'm uncertain if, if the truth be told, I decided to continue to put out content on a Wednesday to try and help people. And I'm just sharing my experience more around the technology side. Um, but equally to sort of help people as well know, that, you know what, you don't have to become this big entrepreneur either. It's like, you know, there's a lot out there. So it, it really is just to help people where, where that will go, what turns that will take, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'll start selling a course. <laughs> yeah, um, fruit, fruit. But, but, but yeah, but I, I, I genuinely, I don't know. I just like to have a bit of fun with it. I share my flying experiences with it. I'd love it if I could try and get those two accounts merged because you know it's difficult trying to put content out across the two. But equally, I'm I'm not as I'm not one of these that posts every day, um, just because I don't always have the time and I prioritize other things over it as well. So we'll see what happens. Um, but, you know, so far, it, I feel it's been a force of good. I was, you know, when that comment came up, which obviously is what connected us to, I felt that that had the desired effect and, you know, help people. And I and I received messages uh, from, you know, people who, you know, perhaps sons, daughters, loved ones, you know, perhaps su suffer with some sort of facial disfigurement or there's something, you know, something that's that they struggle with from a confidence perspective. And, you know, it's helped. So if I can continue with that, then great. That, that that'll do me but the, i don't have any grand master plan at the minute so you're try, trying to use it to serve others rather than yourself then in, yeah. in, in a way yeah and I, I mean i guess i am self-serving because i have a bit of fun with it and i actually enjoy doing it so yeah. you know I, I can't say i'm not because but it is a bit of fun but if the, the thing for me was is was just to help some people yeah well you you get a bit like you say you get the joy of knowing you're helping people as yeah. well than you and i think there's nothing wrong with that i think some people sometimes look at that as if it's like an issue in it because um, some people obviously go out make these vi make make videos of themselves helping yeah. people, and uh, you get a lot of people going on there. Are oh, you just doing this for the views or whatever? Mm. Whereas I tried to look at it from the perspective of, well, yeah, maybe there's an element of that, but maybe they want other people to see what people are going through as well. Because yeah. like if if there's ten thousand people see this video, there's ten thousand more people know actually what's going on in the world. Yeah, and know that there's an issue that maybe needs to be, you know, sorted out. I I think the vast majority of people want to do good. I think and so. Do you know what? If someone's on there dancing around, having a bit of fun, then so what? And if you don't like it, just scroll on by. Yeah. And if you do like it, well, carry on watching it. And yeah. you know, we live in a world where we're all free. So yeah, well, most of us. Um. So you know, I, I think just enjoy it. Um. Yeah, and I think. The other thing is, is if it, it can help people, I, I know a lot of people share their journeys on there. You know, there's lots of different people, not just on TikTok, but in, I think TikTok's sort of been a platform where a lot of people are sharing more of their journeys, but just around their personal journeys, whether it's battling with, you know, mental health issues, battling with addiction, uh, you know, weight. I've seen so many good things that happening. And, you know, I really admire some of these people who, who are putting themselves out there. They've got the confidence to do it and you think well that's good that's a force for good and and i think 90 percent of the people that are on there are doing it for the right reasons yeah it inspires you doesn't it like when you see yeah. someone who's maybe in the same position as you or worse or what you deem worse and then you see them come from this person and build themselves up into someone who's like great and yeah and powerful or whatever or well they've found a, a feeling of self-worth 
Yeah. You know, that's a biggie, isn't it? There's so many people that I think struggle with that. You know, they they lack confidence. They lack that self-worth and, and they're not in love with themselves. And so they're trying to find something. We go back to the money thing that I think a lot of that is to do with that. They think that the money's going to make them happy. Yeah. It's like, no, no, you've got to, <laughs> you got to be happy within yourself first yeah. because none of that stuff will matter when it comes because you'll just be disappointed when you don't get that big, you know, make that thing happen. So I think, um, I think it's good for that. And, you know, people sharing the journeys, you know, does inspire people. I think when you go back to what you said about my stuff, you know, I feel uncomfortable saying it, but if, if, <clears throat> if, if the things that I can do help inspire somebody like that young chap who went and got that job, like, I felt great after that. Like I've not gone and told the world. I mean, I know I'm telling you, but like, I felt great. I felt really good that I'd been able to help him in some way. He did all the work. He, the one who made the effort, but do you know what? That made a bit of a difference to somebody. And yeah. there's, there's another, you know, another chap who, uh, who I've stayed in touch with just to sort of see where he's getting going. Was like, he's at university doing some great stuff. And you know, if you can inspire people to do that, then that, 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 that that's nice. That's a good feeling. And I like that. Definitely. And that's, that's kind of what this is all about for me, to be honest. People come on, you're someone like you talk about your story or someone who's been to the depths of hell, like heroin addiction to yeah. come through to, to do something positive with their life. It's like, it just shines a light on the fact that you can change. You can yeah. do better than the position you're in right now. Or if you are happy, like you said, stay happy in it. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? There's, yeah. And just, just trying to, like I found from listening to podcasts myself, changed my life massively because you get an honest conversation with someone who's just telling their own truth mm. and how that can impact someone is like, it, it takes a small spark to light a big fire, doesn't it? You know? Yeah. And and it does, and it's changed my life listening to other people. So that's kind of the aim with this: is get people in, share the stories, and hopefully put some good into the world. Really, yes. Uh, well, I, I I think that's really good. I think that's really good, and I'm sure it'll, I'm sure you'll achieve that. Yeah. Well, I, I have received messages like, and it, like you said, it does make you feel good when you know, yeah. like, ah, oh, so and so was struggling, and they listened to this, it helped them, and um, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah. That's what it's all about. Definitely. Definitely. Have, have you got a message you want to finish on, Chris? Um, I think one of the things that we spoke about, we didn't really talk about it much, but I think there's something you mentioned off camera before we kind of started uh, around the whole sort of TikTok thing and, and, and confidence. And I think my part in words would be probably around that because I think there's a lot of people out there that don't have a lot of confidence in themselves. And so they sit back and they're not participating. And... I'm somebody that's not always had lots of confidence. I I was very, you know, I've, I've been very privileged in my life to witness, I mean, from a good upbringing and whatever else. But if you live in the Western world, um, well, if you live in most parts of the world where you're free, you've got access to the internet, you know, you are one of the most privileged people around. And confidence is something that isn't reserved for people with good looks or lots of money confidence is something that you can get through good behaviors and practices and i think my part in words would be around that wherever you are on your journey of life if confidence is something that's holding you back just start to take small steps towards doing new things so you're going to have a com we all have a comfort zone you have a comfort zone i have a comfort zone but at least once a week, step outside of it and try to even just try to make that daily. Just set a little, don't set some crazy goal, which is just unachievable. Maybe it's you want to get a new job, but you're afraid to sort of send out the CV. Just start sending something out. Create a LinkedIn profile. Maybe you want to do some public speaking, but you get all nervous and choked up. Just join a speaking group, you know, go, turn up to something or raise your hand at work in a meeting on a Zoom call or something and just ask a question. Does it, no matter, just, just start to push yourself because confidence is, is something that you can get. And no matter how you look, trust me, most people out there are good people. They don't care about what they, they care about what, what it is that you've got to say. So don't let looks and all these other things hold you back and just go for it because like this is, and again, cliche, but this isn't a rehearsal. We're all the same. Scratch the surface. We're all the same. And we're all heading to the same destination. So grab it now and try and make it. If, and if there's one part in thing I can give you, it is that. Just build that confidence little by little 
and strive towards something that makes you happy. Thank you very much, mate. I think that's yep. a powerful word, and I think anyone who's listening, take a note, use it in your own life, and uh, yeah, just, just push to be happy, really, and uh, don't worry about what other people are saying or thinking. It's all it's all about the internal out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks very much, Chris. You're more than welcome. Thanks for you coming on, mate. Enjoyed it. Nice to get to know you a bit. Likewise. Um, anyone who wants to follow Chris, go check him out on TikTok. I don't know your username. If you wouldn't mind telling him. <laughs> I don't, he doesn't know either. I'm supposed to know. I'm supposed to he's know like, which stuff. one? He's got two. I've got, uh, I'm supposed to know these things, aren't I? I should, I should probably look at it. But you, you can actually, you can get me on LinkedIn if you just search for Chris Williams. You'll find me on there. But if you do want to, if you do want to see me dicking around on TikTok, um, then uh, you can find me at Chris underscore Wills nineteen eighty. There you go. Here we are. Here we have it. There you go. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Cheers, Chris. You're welcome. Catch you soon, mate. Thank you. Experience Real Podcast.